Hey chatters, I have a new and improved professor for all of us, which in some ways, if you have a paid account already, might not even be that helpful, but that's okay. We have a custom GPT you can use as well and mess around with, but this is really primarily for people who either don't like the O1 model or want to get that thinking done without having to use O1 or these other reasoning models with just a typical GPT. So this is how it works per usual. We have this start button here that I'm going to click and it's going to use its data analysis tool to almost boot up its thinking. We're going to get into the prompt in a little bit, but I've created a really nice JSON schema to mimic some of the best aspects of how you reason through a problem, but it's also using its Python tool. So it means it can dynamically update its memory and reasoning based on the conversation flow. I will give you one warning as you use this is that if any other tools get used, it's going to probably stop using its thinking. All you got to do in that case is give it some nudge. Say, hey, make sure you update your schema or your reasoning or whatever it might be, and it will reanalyze and update that information. Another thing to know is that as it's saving things, that save only lasts for about an hour. So this is better for something that you're going to sit down and do for a while and really want to focus on. But if you ever at any point step away from it, you might have to almost reload the memory to it so it knows where it's at. In that case, just tell it to download as a JSON file or something like that, and you can always re-upload it to a new conversation. Once he's booted up, we have our first question from him. You've probably seen something like this before. Let's try it out and see what happens. My typical thing is I want help writing a story for my eight-year-old nephew. Let's just send that and we're going to see what happens. You'll see here, even in the first thing, I just got to tell it, hey, let me use this slash command because I tried a couple of times and it wasn't updating. This can be the issue with different models. I found this to be a little bit more reliable on Claude, just taking the prompt and throwing it on there, or even Gemini. But again, it's not a big deal if you just remind it, this is what I want you to do. You'll see that it analyzed, it updated what it's thinking about based on what I've told it. Now we can continue the conversation. So it's giving me some ideas. I want to say a uh, talking animal, a loner albino bat who gets made fun of, but in the end uses his uniqueness to save everyone. Okay, let's see if it actually does the thinking when I said now. It did not. So again, I'm just going to come back here. I'm going to give it the, the little command that we've created. I'm going to say send. And there you go. It's doing it. <laughs> You'll see here, it's not rewriting the entire thing. It's just updating what it already had in its system based on the context that we're giving it. So you'll see it's asking us more questions. Uh, let's have it be in a forest with different forest creatures. Is it going to do it this time? Oh, it actually did it that time. So now we have a little bit more of a pattern going of it using it. So it should be pretty regular now in how it's updating things once it gets going. And I'm just going to say make it up. Let's try drafting the uh, intro. So like I said, what might happen is now it's using its canvas tool. So it totally skipped the thinking and that's totally fine. Again, once we get back more into that, oh, I need you to help me think through this problem. That's when you want to use it. But now that we're actually writing, you might not need it anymore and take up more time. But I can also say I like this style, save it to your schema and it should do a little analysis now. And you can see that it's updating that. So you can give it this nudge and direction for what you want to do. And in some ways it's important because you might not need it to think through all this and update the schema based on what you're doing. Instead, think of this almost like a save. Okay. Now what I'm going to do again is I don't want to necessarily lose this schema. I may have to step away for a few hours, but I want to come back and still have access to it. 
I can say download the schema as a JSON for me. Now you could also do this probably as a Word doc or something else like that. But the idea is now it's actually going to go through and save what we have and we can actually look at it. I'll open it up in a second. And then when you restart your conversation with the professor, you can just upload this and be like, hey, just analyze this, boot yourself up with it, and then let's continue the conversation. So let's go to download and let's check out the JSON. So here's our schema and we can just follow along with it. I'm going to go over what the schema is actually built out of, but here you can see we have the entire sort of conversation so far and where we're at. And then you can just copy and paste this from your downloads, drag it over to your conversation when you need to restart to re-upload. So now we've gone over how to use the new professor. Let's talk a little bit more about the prompt itself and how I have it structured. So first off, you're going to notice the same thing I pretty much do for everything. This is the mission. This is who you are. This is what you specialize in. But you're going to notice here I have code execution tool like a million different places. And you can see, even though I have it in a million different places, it often forgets or skips doing this step. So there's got to be a better way. Uh, the, one of the other problems is I want this prompt to work with pretty much any model that has access to an analysis tool. And so I don't want to say, oh, use your Python tool for ChatGPT when that's not going to work in Claude, which uses more of a JavaScript environment. Anyway, neither here nor there, just know that I've said code execution like 50 times and it still doesn't always do it. Then we have this really long schema. Now, I just want to break down this schema for you and how I've structured it. Because again, maybe you want to structure yours another way, but you're scared by how this JSON looks. All you got to do, give it to your favorite LLM and be like, hey, this is a reasoning schema in JSON. I'd rather it be structured like this and it'll go through that process and develop the schema for you to test. But either way, we have this reasoning object. This is what the entire schema is going to have. So this looks a lot scarier than it actually is. So let's go through. We're requiring all these what? Let's go down. First, we start with EXP, which in this case is expertise. And so you can see this is a type array, which means that it's going to be a list. It's a string, which means we're letters and numbers and stuff. And then the prompt we're giving it that we wanted to fill out, identifying domain expertise. SC, again, what does that stand for? It stands for the subdomain of your expertise, sub expertise. Again, it doesn't matter. You can rename this whatever you want, but we have again, what is your domain and subdomain of expertise? Here we go, specific subdomain. Then we have WM, this is our working memory. So we have a few things in here G, which is our primary goal, SG, which is our sub goal for the moment. PR, which is the steps, the progress that we're going through. And then we have current. This is what are we doing right now? What are we trying to solve at the moment? And last, we have context. What's the context that we need that's relevant to the situation? Then we have KG. This is our knowledge graph. And we require try. This is triplets. And so what a triplet is an array of a special order of subject, predicate, object. Subject being, what are we talking about? Predicate being, what is the nature of the relationship? And object, what is the relationship being, or who is the relationship being done to? So it's going to fill out uh, an array of these based on the situation to help model the problem. Then we have our actual logic, and we break this down into propositions, proofs, critiques, and doubts. So for this, I have it uh, using symbolic reasoning. We're actually going to give it a list of symbols to use, and then it's supposed to translate that symbolic reasoning into natural language so we can actually understand it. Symbolic reasoning, again, is a way to save on tokens, but also a more formal way of thinking through a problem logically in a more mathematical approach. So we'll get to that in a second, but pretty much we wanted to propose a solution, offer evidence, then offer critiques of that, and based on that, essentially reflect on it. What are your doubts? What do we need to be thinking about when going along this case? And then we have our chain of reason. So just the sequential reasoning steps based on all of that. One, two, three, an array, and have some other fields, such as what do things depend on? What's our description? What's the prompt that we're doing? How are we indexing this? This is a way for us to keep track. Then we reflect on it all, and then we have some optional things we can add, such as an error in thinking, a note we want to make sure we're being aware of, or some sort of warning for us. 
So it's going to do all of this in its code execution tool, again, in a, in a way that is human readable, but also structured so that it can be parsed and understood by the AI. And then we have the answer from the professor. Here we have our symbols. This is the neurosymbolic stuff that I was talking about. And so this is just, okay, square means necessarily and blah, blah, blah. These are the symbols you have access to in, in terms of building the logical relationships. Another use your goddamn execution tool. And then we, I like to end with three different types of questions. An investigation question. This is to go deeper into a narrow subject. Exploration to widen the scope and think more about the system. And then exploitation. Let's do something with this information. And then the typical, if you understand, say this, use your code execution tool. And then here's the prompt and the ad stuff that we have. And again, this key little command here, use this if it stops thinking, it'll start thinking again. And then it's final intro to us. There you go. That's the professor. Again, we got it on GitHub. He's going to give you the link, but you can always go to prof synapse slash professor dash synapse to find the GitHub for all of this. And you can just come into prompt.txt and it's going to be right here for you. Uh, I also have a custom instruction prompt here, which I need to update, but it's an older version that still works really well and will fit inside of your custom instructions. The one I just posted does not fit in there. And one last comment is again, you don't really want to use this prompt with a thinking model. It's not going to listen because we are trying to develop the thinking pathway. And also the thinking models aren't going to save its thinking into memory. So we want that too. So I wouldn't use this with the thinking models, but this is more for your typical models. And again, you should be able to use this on other platforms like Gemini and Claude, which also have a code execution tool. So I hope that was helpful. Please leave a star on the GitHub if you find this helpful. And as always, come hang out at synapticlabs.ai or our Discord. All the links are in the description. Thanks, Shatters.